Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Adelman. I am the co-founder and the CTO at Aspecto. And today I'm going to talk with you about how to get end-to-end -end visibility into complex transactions using open telemetry. That is a big statement and let's break it down. So we are focusing here on distributed application, microservices application. We're talking about the scenario when you have services that communicating using some kind of a message broker, such as Kafka, RabbitMQ, Redis, PubSub, SQS, any one of those kind. And we are trying to make sure that we are able to visual, visualize the entire process. And the way that we are going to do that today is by first understanding what is end-to-end -end visibility, what it means, what our expectations are when we are saying end-to-end -end visibility. Then we are going to do a live demo. And in this live demo, we are going to show an application that using the Kafka JS and Node.js. And we are, uh, this, this uh, demo is going to have two services communicating through Kafka. And we are going to uh, implement open telemetry to gain end-to-end -end visibility. And this is going to help you, of course, understand what is open telemetry, how it's correlated to end-to-end -to -end visibility, and eventually have the whole understanding of how to achieve it. So why am I speaking to you about it? So uh, um, just because I have some experience with it, uh, I've been working with microservices and distributed application for the past five or almost six years. Um, most of the time as an independent consultant helping companies and startups uh, break their monolith into microservices. The microservices grew and they had tons of issues. I came to help them and took this knowledge into Aspecto and again, uh, focusing on microservices. Um, cool, so that's about me. Let's dive right into it. So let me give you an example. When I say end-to-end -end visibility, what do I mean? So everything starts with having a service, right? I have a microservice and this service needs to communicate with the rest of the world. And you may start, or in some cases you start using um, HTTP when service A wants to communicate with service B. That's fine and that's great, uh, at least for some cases. But in other cases, you're going to find out that if service B is not available, or if service B is under a lot of load, um, you may find yourself losing data because if say service A sends an API call to service B and service B isn't there, that's a problem. We lost the data. So what we want to do or what we can do is service A is going to send a message through some message broker. The message broker is going to persist the data. Then service B is going to consume that message and handle it. That's all great. So service A is going to produce a message in our case to Kafka, but again, any mess a message broker applies here. And now the messaging persists. When service B is available, it's going to consume that message and then do something with it. Let's say persist it to a database. For me, that's, an, that's the basic of end-to-end -end feasibility. I want to understand a specific message, how it propagated throughout my system, um, what services took place, what they did with, with that message. And that's, the, that's the, the most basic things. And it usually starts to get more complicated when I may have more than one consumer because maybe there is service C also consuming this message. And it's very, very hard for a developer or for a DevOps or SRE to understand for a specific message, who are all the consumers, who is the producer, that's, that's, that's a, could be very, very complex. And this is what I want to get from uh, uh, visibility. To give it some kind of uh, uh, definition. So I want to visualize a message and I want to answer those three questions. Who is a producer? Who who are the consumer? And for each consumer, what did it do with this message? And then that means that they can take every message in my system. I can track it. I can know 
why it was produced. I can understand who consumed it and I can understand what they did with it. It could be very, very uh, uh, um, beneficial when you have errors or, or some issues in production and you're trying to understand what happened. It could be beneficial when you're working in your local and trying to figure out how it works. But that's what uh, I want from having end-to-end -end visibility. End-to-end -end visibility, basically, we can call it also traces. Uh, maybe you're familiar with distributed traces, maybe not, I'll take you through it right now. So distributed tracing is the ability to collect data that will tell us the end-to-end -end, end -end visibility. There is a project by CNCF called Open Telemetry. This project uh, uh, knows how to collect um, uh, traces. Uh, I'll show you in a second how it uh, looks like. And Open Telemetry is uh, uh, responsible for the collecting, collection part. It knows how to collect it, it knows how to ship it. Then you need to figure out what to do with it, how to visualize it. So you implement an SDK within your code. There are a lot of um, programming languages supporting Open Telemetry. And uh, um, once you send it out, we need to visualize it either as Vendor or by an open source, as you will see in a second. So to give you an example how a trace looks like, so this is uh, a trace. We're seeing here Jaeger UI. Jaeger UI is an open source that, well, knows how to display traces. And the trace that you can see here is a quite simple one. Um, I wouldn't say there is tons of end-to-end -end visibility because everything is, is synchronous and, and HTTP based. Well, almost, um, but let's try to figure out this UI and what we, are, what we can see here. At the left-hand side, we have uh, a tree view. And in this tree view, you can see that order service is getting an API call to slash purchase order. Then it communicates with the user service and uh, sends an API call to slash user. Um, then we have order service and order service then sends an API call to stock service to update the stock. Uh, stock service runs a DB query against stock items and update some item. And then order service publishes a Kafka message um, called new order. So basically I told you a story and unlike logs, I have the context of what happened here. So when I'm looking at each let's say log entry at each, at each line here, at each, at each uh, event in my trace and events called uh, spans, um, I can know who is the parent. I can know who caused it. I can have the context why it happened. Every line here represents a part of the story and you know the previous thing that happened that caused it. And this is very powerful. Um, this is taking you to a whole new level talking in the student application because when something happens and you ask why, just look one row above and you have the answer. At the right side, we have a timeline. At the timeline, we can see for each span how long it took. And this is why it's called a span because it spans over time. It has a start point and an end point. And it's not only telling you um, uh, uh, how long it took, but it's also telling you in that story what was in parallel and what was uh, synchronous. So you can see that only when the user service call ended, then the update stock started. Basically, it's telling you the story, hey, most probably this uh, update stock can't start unless slash verify is complete. So this is a trace. This is what we're trying to achieve. And it's Easier when talking about synchronous stuff, it's getting a bit more complex talking about asynchronous stuff. And this is what we are going to achieve today. So I want to take you th through open telemetry and how it works in concept just before we're diving into the code. So you'll have an understanding how it works in, in theory and then how it works in, in real life in, in, in actual code. So we have this setup, we have a browser sending an API call to service A, service B, and then a DB call. And in each service, we have open telemetry implemented within the code. And when 
when we said earlier that we are uh, having a context, we have a tree view. To have a tree view, you need to have a parent-child uh, relation. And the service A interactions are the parent of service B interaction. So when service B is going to report, hey, I wrote a DB query, it should report that the parent who caused it is service A. That means that the context between service A and service B needs to pact with the HTTP call that we have between those two. This is why the HT open telemetry, when it sends out an API call, it sends out an HTTP call, it's going to inject in the header the trace ID. So service A inject in the header the trace ID to service B, so, and also the, uh, uh, um, the parent ID. And that would cause that when service B is reporting what, what happened, it reported under the context of service A. For the purposes of making it simple, let's say that the open telemetry reports directly to a trace database. Of course, it's a bit more complex than that, but to make it uh, simpler. So service A is reporting, hey, I'm sending an API call to service B, that's trace ID number one. Then service B call is reporting, I got an API call, I got an HTTP call from service A, that's trace ID number one, but also, it's the child of this span that service A sent. And then when service B is reporting, I did some DB query, it also trace ID one and saying that it's the uh, child of the uh, uh, span that happened in service A. Um, that's, the, that's the theory of how it works. And that's what enable us to create this beautiful visualization that we saw earlier in uh, in Yege. Cool. So let's dive into how this thing looks. And as we said, we are going to have a project um, in Node.js. We are going to use Kafka, and then uh, we'll have end-to-end -end visibility. So let's jump right to the code. So what you can see here is a very very simple project. We have two services. We have the consumer service. The consumer service is um, creating a Kafka consumer. It connects to Kafka, connects to Kafka. Then it subs subscribes to a topic called test, test topic. And on each message it receives, it just logs it into the console. Very straightforward, very simple. The producer service is creating a producer, connecting to Kafka, sends a Kafka, Kafka message through the test topic with some value and it's doing that only when we send an get HTTP call to slash produce. So just to make sure everything is working, let's round those two and we will just jump to uh, where uh, um, slash produce uh, uh, browser and we ran it, we got an okay. To make sure everything works, we just expect to see the consumer that it consoled, uh, cool, because that's the value that we sent. And we can see that we wrote the cool message. And that's cool. But it's very, very simple. And we wanted to see how open telemetry works. So let's do git checkout two, And we are progressing to the next level. So now we added both in the producer and the consumer in the first line of code, we are importing a file called import, uh, tracer and we are initializing it with some service name. Let's open the tracer to understand what it is and what, it, what it's doing. So what you can see here, we are having a basic implementation of open telemetry. The first thing that we do is we are defining where to send the traces to. And <clears throat> as you saw earlier, we are using the Eger. Um, and we are sending the traces directly to Jaeger, so we will be able to visualize it. Then we're initializing the node SDK with the service name that we got. Uh, here it was consumer service, here it's producer service. And we are asking OpenTelemetry to do all the instrumentations automatically. Um, we would see that some things work and some things don't work. Uh, Kafka doesn't work out of the box. And we would start with making uh, um, um, 
it a bit complex with manually integrating Kafka and then we'll see a far easier uh, uh, solution. So let's run the consumer, let's run the producer and let's see what happens when we uh, uh, implement open telemetry. Um, run the producer, yeah. Okay, so I'll go into cool and do cool number two. Okay, we did cool number two. We expect to see cool number two. We have it. And we also have Jaeger available. So looking at Jaeger, we have the producer service. That means that we got some traffic. And looking at the producer service, we can see that we have a get to slash produce. Get to slash produce, we had some middleware, some middleware, some request center for slash produce, but we don't have anything related to Kafka. We don't have anything related to Kafka. Also, we can see the consumer service right here, even though we should have seen that. That's not a bug that's uh, expected because we, as we said, the Kafka is not supported by default and we're going to now add it the hard way and then the easy way. So let's start with adding it. So let's do checkout number three and I'll spin up both services, but let's review the changes that I implemented in the code. So the changes that impl I implemented are fairly simple. Um, I uh, grab from open telemetry my tracer that allows me to create spans by myself. And I am in my API call within the implementation of my API call, I'm starting a new span called produce message. And after I completed uh, uh, sending the data, I am closing that span. The same goes for my consumer. Um, in my consumer, I um, created a new span uh, called consume message and I'm closing it. So basically what I did, I did a manual instrumentation. I manually went and changed my code, my application layer code in order to have end-to-end -end visibility. In some cases that would be required, in others we will be able to avoid that. But I want you to see how it really, really works. We'll have a good understanding of open telemetry before you're getting the cool stuff that everything just works out of the box. Okay, so we did that. What we expect now to see after sending an API call, we expect to see those spans in our trace. So let's go back to our test page, run cool number three. Let's validate that it's still working. Yes, it is. Let's go to Jaeger and refresh Jaeger. So first thing first, we can see that we are now have both the producer and the consumer. That's super cool. Let's see what we have in our producer. You can see that we used to have four spans and now we have five spans. Cool, that means that we have one new span. And yeah, we have the slash produce and now we have the producer message. The producer message, that's exactly the text that I had it right here. Cool, um, that means that we are able to mark that we sent the data to Kafka. However, we don't see the consume side and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure that the produce side also is available here. Looking at, at the search, we did see the consumer. So let's see what we have the consumer. In our consumer, we have the consume message and we can actually even see the value that I wrote down into the span um, with call number three. So the data is here, but for some reason, I don't have um, the whole trace all together. I have it broken into two different sections. This is a bad thing, we need to fix it. Um, and the reason is that if you re recall in, our, in, in the slide that I explained to you that open telemetry automatically injects the context into the HTTP headers. We didn't do that. And very happily, um, Kafka allows us to have headers. So when I checked out uh, code uh, uh, tag four, you can see here that I am injecting the current, the active span 
into the headers of the message. So I don't know if you know, but Kafka allows you to have uh, headers. Most uh, PubSub message brokers allow you to have some kind of a metadata that is being sent along your, uh, um, along your messages. So in the producer, I injected it. And in my consumer, I extracted it. And the code here becomes a bit complex, right? The, the, this used to be only this portion of code. And now the things starts to look a bit awkward. Um, again, this is for the purpose of showing you how to integrate it, how to be open telemetry expert. And our last thing that we will do today would be to simplify it all over again. Um, but let's see if everything works. So I am doing yarn consume, I'm doing yarn produce. Everything uh, is initializing, um, looks like it's gonna work. So let's go back to our tester and let's do cool number four. We got an okay. We can see here that we got cool number four. We can see here that I logged the headers. So the headers, uh, you can see here the trace parent. When I said that we're sending the trace ID, I a bit simplified it. We're sending trace parent. This is some encoding for um, more than just an, an ID. But our eventual goal was to go to um, Jaeger, go to the producer. And as you can see here, now the slash produce has six bands. And now we can see both services. I can see the consumer and the producer all together. And now the producer um, is here and the consumer is here as a child of the producer. That means that we were able to get end-to-end -end visibility. Anything that, that will happen in the consumer service will be also available right here. If I have multiple consumer, they'll all be right here. We got, uh, uh, through a lot of work, we got it working. Now, to ease your mind that it could be far more simple, let me just do check out number five. And you can see that we are back to the very, very simple code of just logging it. Same goal for the producer, nothing special here, nothing that relates to open telemetry. I did do one thing. In my tracer uh, file, I added uh, open telemetry instrumentation for Kafka JS and just added a new instrumentation. That means that this thing, thing could be auto-instrumented. Just let's see that everything works and then we'll be super happy. Um, the same way that uh, um, we could have had, uh, do HTTP automatically, we could have done, we are, we are able to do Kafka automatically as well. So let's do cool number five. We still have number five. We don't have the log to trace, uh, the trace parent as we had before. Um, and let's search for the last one. And yeah, everything looks the same. We can see that everything works uh, uh, as expected and that's all great. So every time that you're implementing open telemetry and you are missing some kind of data, most likely you are missing an instrumentation. You can pass here an array, a list of instrumentation some of them are automatically, some of them you will need to add manually. And if you are looking where to search, you can go to opentelemetry.io and in opentelemetry.io, you will have the registry. Looking at the registry, this is where you can find all the different instrumentation. So uh, if you're interested, for instance, in JavaScript, and then you're looking for instrumentation, now you can see the whole list of all the different instrumentation. So if you're using MongoDB, you have that. If you're using uh, MySQL, you have it. So, uh, or gRPC or GraphQL or whatever. So if you're missing some data, don't start to manually instrument uh, uh, it yourself. As you saw, the code was rather complex and um, integration of open telemetry in the application code um, could make it just 
how to, to read the, all the developer needs to suddenly understand open telemetry. And if you have an auto instrumentation, it keeps the code very, very clean and very, very simple. So I would urge you to first look for an instrumentation before you start to make changes uh, um, by yourself. Okay, um, so we uh, uh, looking at what we learned. So basically we learned about open telemetry, right? That's, that's the basics of, of uh, having an instrumentation by ourselves. And um, if you want to be able to collect this data, you need to understand how open telemetry works. You need to understand very, very little about open telemetry. It's an SDK. You can just grab the code um, and, and put it in, in, in your own code. Different languages, the implementation would look a bit different overall, a simple, uh, um, you know, a, a simple process. If you're doing distributed systems, I think you have to, to use it. It will make your debugging and troubleshooting like way more easier. And, um, and, and, and uh, you know, just give it a try, just an SDK. Always look for an open instrumentation, as I showed you in the registry. If you are lacking it and you don't have it, um, I think it worth the effort to either do an, uh, um, you know, um, a menu instrumentation as I showed you, or maybe um, write your own instrumentation and then publish it to the registry. Um, if you have uh, uh, the time and effort, that is a very fun thing uh, to do and you will learn a lot of, from that. So thank you very much um, for you know, listening to this talk. If you have any questions about distributed application, open telemetry, message brokers, feel free to reach out and thank you. I hope you learned something new today.